the Arima Hestia minivan mod for BeamNG. This is a brand new car from Docro Swag, who created the epic fictional brand Arima. It's a late 90s and early 2000s Japanese minivan. In real life, this is based on the Toyota Gaia, and as you can see, it pretty much follows that to a T. I mean, it's identical, but I do love the look of this thing. It's a very interesting design, probably my favorite looking minivan in BeamNG. The interior is also really, really nice quality. This is actually the base model and we even get wood, but look at the quality of that radio cluster down there and then the dials are all really nice. Very high quality, Dr. Swag is definitely improving as a mod creator. The doors do open. This is the seven seat version. You can also get a six seat version. Have a look at the space in the back here. It's not bad. If we pull up to the Soliad Lansdale, we can see a clear difference. The Lansdale has sliding doors like that, but the Hestia just has normal doors at the back. And there is a reason for that. So in Asia, minivans are actually classed as luxury vehicles. Can you believe that? And I suppose having sliding doors, even though it's a cool feature, makes it look a bit more like a utility vehicle or, or an MPV, as we call them here, and a multi-purpose vehicle. But the driving experience, well, what's it like? Quite a soft suspension. It's got a straight four cylinder engine. I think this is a petrol. You'll just get a 2.2 litre diesel in this thing and I think they're all four cylinders um, paired with an automatic gearbox. Where's the shifter? Oh, it's on a stalk. You don't see a stalk shifter very often in this game. Whoa, bit of understeer. I mean, it is a little bit lighter than the Soliad Lansdale, especially thanks to not having sliding doors which weigh a ton. Okay, let's go for a crash test and I think we can crash into that brick wall down there. Here we go, just over 60 miles per hour and oh, yes. That is a good J-Beam. All of Dr. Spike's mods have had a good J-Beam so far, and this is just no different. Looks good. The steering wheel has moved quite a lot, um, but the interior deformation is also not bad. Whoa, the wheels come through the cabin. There are 15 different configs in this mod. Let's check them all out, starting with the diesel. So it's a 2.2 litre diesel, and listen to this. Sounds a bit rough, doesn't it? That's definitely a custom noise, but when you rev it up, it sounds just like a normal diesel, but it idles so rough. What the heck? So we've got a turbocharged diesel and it does deliver quite a bit of torque. It's definitely not as fast as a two litre petrol, but mm, I mean, it feels a little bit heavier, which is realistic. You know, diesel engines do weigh a lot more. I don't think this engine really fits the personality of the car. And were diesels ever popular in Japan? The Toyota Gaia on which this was based was only sold in Japan. I think in Britain we had mostly the Toyota Previa. Do you remember that? Ah, oh, the Toyota Previa, such an awesome car. Mid-engine, would you believe? This is not mid-engine. In fact, let's have a look under the bonnet at the engine model. So you've got to go uh, click this button here. That's the only working button on the interior, I think. Um, there are mods coming out which will have lots of buttons, but you know, that's the standard. Oh. I mean, it's not a bad model, it's okay. Oh look, Soliad Lansdale, let's do a rear end crash. This thing is not fast, wow. Oh, 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 wow. We came off okay there, but the Lansdale, oh my goodness. It went right underneath the damage there. Wow, to the chassis, wow. This is the six seat mid trim family variant. It's got a slightly more powerful engine and a very funky looking paint job. Let's have a look at all the different paint jobs. So you can have just an all white red Mika. That's quite nice, golden sand. I mean, there are some interesting colors in here. Look at these purpley ones, like pink, and two purples. You would never see that as an option on a car today. More powerful two litre engine, let's see. Mm, it feels a bit better. We're in kilometers per hour, which is a bit alien to me, but I guess, oh, 60 kilometers per hour, whoa. Okay, more wheel spin, that's definitely faster. Oh, sorry, sorry, I've just taken the bumper for an ETK. There's actually a working clock down there in the center console and a working trip meter, odometer, and that's counting up the kilometers. So this is pretty cool. We've got some nice features in this car, whoa. In fact, let's try and do a handbrake turn. Can you handbrake turn a minivan? Here we go. Ooh. Yes, you can, it's front wheel drive. That does help the handbrake turns quite a bit. Here we go, let's do it again. Whoa, ah, oh, perfect, love it. I really like the design from the rear. I think it's much better than the other minivans we've seen in BeamNG. The front is a bit generic, but the rear, I do really like it. The light cluster, especially. The seven seat option has this tiny little middle seat. I mean, who's gonna sit there? Probably a really small child. And the six seat is far more sensible. You've got a big corridor down the center here, more space for the center passengers. You could get your mid trim Hestia with the Zephyr package. This gives you aero bumpers, a tuned exhaust, oh yeah, look at that, and a Zephyr badge, but interior-wise, we've got this custom GPS. As you can see, it's got Japanese writing on it, 
does look really, really nice. And look at the custom colours on the sat-nav. I do think that looks very, very clear. Yellow roads and orange marker for the car. The exhaust doesn't really add much power and it doesn't really have any different suspension. There are sport models we'll be checking out very soon, but I mean, wow, that is a lot of understeer. We were taking that pretty fast. I like the white seats as well. And have we looked at the carpets? I think that's the Arima badge right down there, but looks pretty nice. Let's do a crash into a Brooklyn Grand. Oh, flipped it over. Yep, you wouldn't want to do that in your minivan. This is the Journey, one of the highest up trims. And we've got something very special. Jewel sunroofs. Yay! Can you open them? Oh, I don't think you can. But they're really nice. They let a lot of light in. This is another version of the Journey, and it has all-wheel drive. Now, because the Journey has a more powerful 2-litre engine, let's see what the all-wheel drive does for traction. So here we go. Revving it up, and... <laughs> That's pretty pathetic. Uh, is it more powerful? Yeah, I don't think it's powerful enough to warrant having all-wheel drive. Good top speed here, passing two Lansdales, absolutely leaving them in my dust. Here we go, doing a bit of off-road in our all-wheel drive. Hestia, whoa, all-wheel drive minivan. Oh, oil pan damaged, engine damaged, and we're in a bush. The Journey also has its own special trim level called the Olympiad, and look at this body kit. That is a funky looking body kit. And I love the gold decals down the side, and there you go, Olympiad, obviously inspired by the Olympic Games from Greece. And oh my goodness, Interior is the same. I would expect a bit more from the interior if I paid extra for this, but whoa, this feels faster. That's crazy. This isn't even the sport model and it feels pretty quick. Now, can we drift this thing? Ooh, no, not really. That wasn't so much of a drift as a slide. Here it is, the ERVS. This is the sport model and it's got a two litre turbocharged petrol engine. I think it looks quite like a Vauxhall or Opel Zafira in this body kit. I mean, they did make a sporty version of that car and it was also sort of a minivan. Anyway, let's get this thing on the road. So is it quick? All wheel drive again. No wheel spin at all. It would be better if we did have a manual gearbox, but whoa. Yes, that is feeling better. And we've got a beefed up suspension, so there's less body roll. And it just seems to have less understeer. Okay, I'm really going to push it. I'm not going to take my foot off the throttle. We're going to go back over the bridge and see. Whoa, mind out, man. Whoa, <laughs> how do we make it through there? We're going to see what speed we can get up to. Whoa, here we come. Go to this few, break a bit, break a bit. Oh, I needed to break here. Oh, she brakes well. Good brakes. Right, change up that gearbox. My goodness. Here we go. Over the bridge. Mitting all the traffic right down the center line and we're already up to 100 miles per hour. That's 180 kilometers per hour. This is pretty crazy. I think most Japanese cars would be limited by this stage. Can we get around this corner? It's very hard to get around. Yes, that is pretty good. H high speed handling is actually good for a minivan. Whoa, don't do that, man. I'm loving burning through here, but you don't want to turn on me. I, can I can't really stop that fast. That was incredibly close. 110, 112, we're changing up still. I don't think it's going to have a very high top speed. We're kind of stuck at about 115. Here we go. Let's do a crash test into a Pessima. Here we go. Ooh, big crash right there. But you know what? Whoa, what are you doing? I was about to say the Pessima soaked up a lot of the damage, but now another Pessima is coming to attack us. This is the Onkyozaku. It's a custom-tuned Japanese variant which has massive speakers in the back. Now, first of all, how did this get on the repo? I mean, this is free on the repo and it says Bose, doesn't it? That is the Bose logo, right? And JBL. I swear brands weren't allowed on the repo. Anyway, open it up. Whoa, look at that. Listen now, Midnight Lady. I don't know how to turn it on, which is a big shame, but it's huge and I'm sure it's really loud. Interior, well, we've got some kind of decal on the front window there. It says, stunting like my mama. Yes, that's what my mama does. And as you can see, we've got a Nomi steering wheel, although the thing has been slammed. So it's, it really rides flat and the ro oh! Oh my, wow. I mean, this uh, drag strip is a bit grippier, but that rip <laughs> that rolled over pretty easily. I love the map. Look, you can even see like a grass texture, like greenery on the map. That looks great. This one's similar, but slightly different because it's the stanced on its own without those massive speakers. As you can see, Stance Nation, uh, Harshen Party, that must be German. I don't recognize that. And Kissy Boom Boom. 
Yes. Uh, look at the space in the back. Maybe they want to fit some speakers back there. I right? Actually, I don't want to know what they get onto in the back there. But if you press Alt and N, which is usually the key for fog lights. Yeah, undercar lighting. I love that. And it's the same color as the paintwork. Drive, it feels quite similar. As you can see, the sign over here actually changes color. It's like RGB. I've not seen anything like that in a Beam and G mod before. Indicate. Yeah, I mean, someone that slammed their car or stanced their car would never really indicate, would they? Or would they? I don't know. How good is it a handbrake? turn. Slight, oh, slightly worse. Not as good as the others, I guess. Oh, my body kit. Oh, no. I guess stancing doesn't help the handbrake turns. Now, these are two tuned variants with anime skins on. It's quite common in BeamNG mods to have anime skins, and these are from an anime called Itasha, apparently. Um, I've noticed something on here. There are also brands on here. We've got Dr. Pepper. I saw IBM somewhere, which is crazy to me. Look, IBM? Seriously, how did they get this on the repo? Docro Swag, what are you doing? I think we're going to drive the more colourful one, this. Okay, so it's also got tuned uh, modifications and look at these gold wheels. I quite like those. Oh, no, actually, they're bronze. Feels very similar. It does rev up a little bit higher, a little bit more powerful at the top end. Maybe it's got VTEC. Now, how does it handle around the track? Pretty flat. Oh, that is grippy. That's, I mean, the gearbox is letting it down. If I put it into two, that should mean it keeps the gears a bit lower. Right. Rev it right up. Could do with more power. There is an even more powerful variant we will check out. Now, does it roll over on normal tracks? No, I don't think it does. Here we go, brake. Yeah, good brake. Really good brakes. I mean, this is never going to be the fastest vehicle ever. I would like to see a minivan racing series, but it's probably not going to happen. Here we go, handbrake. Whoa, is it all-wheel drive? I think it's front-wheel drive, weirdly. Wow, we kind of bounced around a bit there, but not bad. We did regain control quite easily. This is the Vladivostok Tuna Special. It was imported into Russia and given a very high-power 2-litre engine. It's got completely blacked-out windows. I mean, it's, it's all black. There is not a speck of other colour on this car. So how powerful is this thing? Let's rev it right up. Whoa, that revs highly. And here we go. A little bit of wheel spin. Whoa, yes. That's more like it. I reckon 0 to 60 is probably sub 6 seconds and the brakes are oh, not quite good enough for the speed. But does the gearbox change down? Not quite quick enough. Yeah, gearbox is sluggish, but look at that power. Wow, listen to the turbo wastegate. That's awesome. It's a very, very powerful turbo here, clearly. Now, surely we could get some four-wheel drifting going. Here we go. Whoa. <laughs> that nearly worked. Okay, we're on the final straight. I'm hammering the throttle and let's see what speed we can get to before we hit the end. Well, that's 145 miles per hour already. 150 over the crest of the hill. Wow, this is fast. This could probably get to 200 with a long enough road. Here we go. Slow motion into the tyres. Wow, the tyres didn't do a great job there, did they? Oh my goodness, it's been completely crushed at the front. Look at the way the dashboard ended up. The dashboard is outside the car and listen. I can hear something. It's like a fan still rotating. Wow, look at that. Come on then, quick run on the highway. Let's see what speed this thing can really do. 170 miles per hour. Come on, 175. Turbocharger overheating. Oh my goodness. They haven't tuned it very well, clearly. Whoa! Oh, 200 BX. Get wrecked. That was the Arima Hestia minivan by Docro Swag. It's available for free on the repo. I'll leave a link to it in the description below. If you'd like to see my video on Docro Swag's last mod, another Arima, click the video on screen right now. I think you'll enjoy it. Thanks for watching. That's all from me, and I'll see you soon for some more simulator adventures.